to set up the uh, REST API, you will have to create the REST API user account first. So click on system, go to administrator, and then click on create new, second option, REST API admin. Put the name as API, for example, and put the comment as API. You can select the administrator profile. There are two default profile, admin no access or super admin read only, or you can create the new one. For example, let me create a new one. So we'll name it as API profile, and I'm going to set the read write access. I do not want to overwrite the idle time or time as of now, so I'll keep it uh, unchecked. Let's try to click OK. So now we have the API profile. I'll select that. Next option is the PKI group. Well, you can define the PKI group so that uh, you have extra layer of security, whereas in client certificate and the token must match to grant access to the API. So if you are planning to do that, to have extra layer of security, well, you can create the PKI profile and then add it here so that the client certificate and the token both should be matching to get the access to the API. In my case, I do not have that requirement, so I'll keep it disabled. Next option is the CORS allow origin. Well, this particular option will allow the third party web app to make API requests to the 48 firewall using token. So I do not have any web app which is uh, requesting or trying to access the 48 firewall using API. So I'll keep it disabled. The last option is the trusted host, whereas in you can list down the IPs and networks that are supposed to query the firewall using the API. So you can have IPv4, you can have IPv6, but you cannot have any in there, for example, 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0. So you should have the specific network or the hosting. In my case, it is open, so I'm, keep it, I'm keeping it unchecked. Let's try to click OK. So once you click OK, it will generate the API key. This is one time key. You'll have to keep it handy. Else you will have to regenerate it. So now we are done. We have the API user available for the REST API, which can be used for automating the configuration, taking backups, or monitoring the 40 gate firewall. So the same can be done from the CLI as well. Let me switch to the CLI. So this is the 40 gate firewall. And from CLI, you can do the same thing by going to system hierarchy and then API user. If you check, you have the profile that we have created from the GUI. You can create a new profile, for example, API testing. And then you can set comment. And then you can set the access profile you can call the existing one or you can create a new one. And then if you want to configure the trusted host, well, you can do that, else you can keep it empty, where in my case, I do not want to add any trusted host. So I'm keeping, keeping the entry empty. So these are the minimum requirement here. So now once you have the account created, the API account created, which is the API testing, you can generate the one-time API token using the command execute API user generate key. And you will have to mention the API username. In our case, it is going to be API testing. Well, you can see here, this is the new API key. You will have to note down this particular API key so that you can use it from your third party application or system to access the resources on FortiGate Firewall using the API calls. And um, if you lose this particular uh, 
key, then you can regenerate it using the same command. So you can see here, it is generating a new key. So once you lose this particular key, you will have to regenerate it on the 40 gate firewall again. So this is all about how you set up the REST API and you know set up the profile, set up the API account so that it can be used from the system, monitoring app, API applications. In the next video, in the coming video, I'll show you how you can access those token, API token and API user to get some details from the FortiGate firewall. Thank you for tuning in. Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. See you in the next one.